Hey hey, Marcus House with you here and welcome to episode 7 in our quick progression series. And today we're going to be doing our very first Mun landing, finally. We're just going to jump into our mission control building. We're just going to grab the Orbit the Mun mission here. We're going to grab the plant flag on the Mun. And we'll also grab the science data from the surface of the MUN as well. Now you can pick up anything else that's kind of MUN related there, whether it be science you know, around the MUN as well. So we'll just jump into our research and development center. We've got 151 science points here, so uh, what we actually need to do is, uh, is purchase the fuel systems upgrade here, and this is going to give us finally our external fuel ducts. Uh, it's also going to give us a few other extra larger fuel tanks as well, so that's uh, 90 science, we'll grab all that, uh, leave the facility and then jump into our uh, vehicle assembly building. So we're just going to modify our craft from episode 6. We're just going to take out our crew cabins, we want to make this craft as light as we can, we've got a, a lot of Delta V that we need to get to the MUN. We're just going to grab the entire bottom of our rocket here, we're just going to turf it all, we're going to rebuild this thing from the ground up now. And in fact what we'll do is we'll use one of our new tanks. We're just going to grab a much wider tank for stability purposes when we land and we're going to stick our Terrier engine underneath that. Just go grab our landing legs again, wherever they've gone. Pop them back on. I usually like to do the um, Symmetry 4 with landing legs, it just makes it more stable when you land. You can do it with 3 but it just tends to overbalance sometimes. In version 1.1 I've noticed the landing legs are quite small, um, so what we're going to do is grab the move tool and we're just going to move the landing legs down as far as we can, uh, and that's just going to mean that our terrier engine doesn't hit the ground first. So we'll just uh, you know, start those retracted obviously so that they're not out by default. And we're just going to duplicate that quickly so we can grab the decoupler easily. You can just alt click to do that and we're just going to switch down. We'll just grab the FLT800 fuel tank, the much longer fuel tank and we'll just pop that on here. We're going to grab two of those. We'll grab our swivel engine for the, uh, for the central stage. And now we're going to do something a little new. We'll grab our uh, decouplers, wherever they've gone. Can't find anything today. Okay, we'll whack those on there. We actually only want symmetry of two though. Uh, and I'll explain why in a moment. We're going to do what's called asparagus staging. So we're actually going to set up three groups of two. And they're going to be pairs, sets that we can dump separately. And we'll just mirror the core stage here. We'll grab two and we'll pop these on the outside. Put it straight over the top of the decoupler so it will actually stick. You've just got to make sure that you attach it to the decouplers themselves, not the rocket tank. It's actually really easy to do that. So we're going to stack those two like this. Just putting on a few nose cones on the top of this here to keep ourselves a little more aerodynamic. And we're just going to move this up. Again you can just use your move tool to adjust from the decouplers where it's going to sit. That looks better. Okay, we will also whack the Reliant fuel engines on. Now again I use these Reliant engines because they've just got better performance in the atmosphere than the swivel engine. And now what we want to do is make two more identical copies of this to place around our rocket. So you want to alt click on the decoupler to copy the entire segment. Just try to line it up as best as we can. When you're actually adjusting your decouplers just try to find a space on the rocket, just a, a visual cue to line them up as closely as you can. You don't want the weights to be off by too much, otherwise it's going to cause you trouble when you are actually lifting off. So now we've actually got three pairs of two. Now the fuel ducts are great because they essentially pump fuel from the first place you attach them, and the fuel then flows to the second attachment point. So we first want to pump the fuel from the two outside rockets, these two outside rockets, into the central core, so the central core runs out last. 
So it's a little bit tight to get in there, but you just need to move your camera around so that you can attach it in this way. So we're going to work backwards here to make fuel flow from the two adjacent sets of boosters. And then we're going to do the same to that adjacent set so that it's just flowing in a constant direction. So we've now got a four stage initial booster here. So fuel flows from stage one to stage two, stage two to stage three, stage three to the core stage. So now we're just going to place winglets on each of our sets of two. Again, we have to do this manually for each set just because we have this asparagus staging set up. Now we want all of our rocket engines to fire together, all of them. The next thing we want to do is make sure that we decouple all of our stages in the correct order. And it's very important you get these around the right way. The, the first stage that we want to decouple is the stage that's going to run out of fuel first, this first stage in the chain. So we're just rearranging this. So that's the first stage. Then the next one that's going to come off, you can see the green here. That's the next stage that's going to come off, stage two. And then that's the third stage that's going to come off there. We also just want to again bring our fifth engine down, the core engine, so that they're all firing together. And this is important mainly because you don't want any dead weight, you want all the thrust you can get. And we'll just save this. Mission 7. Save that. And we'll launch. So we'll just hit the T key for our SAS to be enabled and then we'll just lean over a little bit towards our 10 degree mark and hit prograde. Oh, we forgot struts, this is not going to be stable at all. Is it going to make it though? No, it's going to start to wobble. The Kraken! <laughs> yep, okay, this is not going to work, we better... Uh... <laughs> I get away with it. No, I, we need to do it right. We'll, we'll get rid of this. We'll revert our flight back to the vehicle assembly. We need to put some struts on this thing. So, grab some struts. We're just going to pop them along the top stages of each of these rockets and we're just going to link them to the top here. We've again got to do these in our three sets of pairs. That's one of the disadvantages of asparagus staging setups. And we just link them all together as well. Again, this has got to be done in pairs, so we just do this once, twice, and a third time. That'll hold us together much better, I'm sure. Uh, let's give this another go. Save and launch. We'll speed this up a little bit this time so that we're not sitting through that again. That's much more stable, there's no wobbling going on now. Detaching the first stage. Now it looks like all of the stages are actually draining, but that's not the case. As soon as you detach a stage, all of the fuel in the next stage appears full again. So we'll detach the second stage. So you can see here, all of our rockets are still full, they're still f completely full, which is, uh, so this asparagus staging gives us a great efficiency. We're just going to boost our apoapsis there up until we get above our 70,000. We'll probably head for about 80,000 this time. And we'll just coast up to our apoapsis marker. Now again, the external ducts are pumping fuel from the two outside boosters into the central core booster. So as soon as we detach these, the central core booster is still going to be completely full. So we'll just burn the remaining fuel in this third stage now. And we'll just decouple, leaving us with our core stage. And we'll just cut our engines. And again, we'll just coast up to our apoapsis marker. Now essentially this core booster is pretty much completely full, we're basically already in orbit almost, we just need to do a slight burn up here at our apoapsis marker just to circularise our orbit. And we're still going to be left with pretty much all of the fuel in this, in this uh, core stage, so that's a great position, we can get all the way to the MUN with this. We've actually got plenty of fuel for the entire mission, to be honest, I've overcompensated for, with our Delta V for this mission. Um, so it, it, it's we've got plenty. So we'll just quick save this. Now we need to set our MUN as the target. 
similar to what we did in the last episode with our rescue vessels. And again, we want to get our ascending node and our descending node exactly spot on. Now we need to come around for another orbit anyway, so we'll do it at our ascending node. And with the magic of video editing, we're going to bypass this and we'll jump straight to that marker. Okay, so at our ascending node here, we've just got to um, do a slight retro, uh, not retrograde, a slight anti-normal burn there just to align that up. We were pretty gosh darn close there anyway. So we're just going to, to um, set a maneuver node for the MUN, and we just want to point to our blue marker here, which is our maneuver marker. It's good to use the blue maneuver node marker just because then you're pointing in the right direction to start with. So we'll just do the main MUN burn now. Again, we're time accelerating this just so we don't have to sit through the monotonous burn. Otherwise, this episode will be going for 40 minutes. And there we go, we're pretty much bang on the marker there. Now what you want to do is actually focus view on the MUN, just, just click and focus view. Now you can see there, as we're currently standing, we're on a collision course. We're actually going to smash straight into the Moon, so that's no good. We can just switch to prograde, and we can just do a very, very tiny, very subtle burn. Um, and because we're so far away, just a tiny few metres per second makes all the difference, all the difference in the world. So we just need to do a slight burn, and we'll get our apoapsis, our periapsis, sorry, we'll get our periapsis uh, on an orbit of the Moon. And once you're happy with that, all you need to do is then just click and say warp here on the line where you would like to warp to. Essentially our next burn is going to be at the periapsis marker to get ourselves into a MUN orbit. Now when you're doing little correction burns like we just did, you can just tap shift and control just to slightly adjust your thrust. Just warping in there and we'll just quickly turn to retrograde. And as soon as we hit our periapsis marker there, we're going to fire our engines and bring our apoapsis way down. In fact, it will become our periapsis. The periapsis, of course, being the closest point in your orbit of the body, so in this case, the MUN. Around 30,000 metres there. We'll warp around the other side. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to plan and we're going to manoeuvre so that we're going to be landing in the sunlight. We don't want to be landing in the dark. We can't see anything in the dark. So again, we'll warp around to our periapsis. And we're just going to bring our apoapsis down now, which will again become our periapsis. Turning retrograde here so that we're reducing our apoapsis on the opposite side of the orbit. And we're just bringing that down there. Just bring it down to around about 10, 10,000 metres. And that's a good area to start, start in on our landing. Now, we want to pick a spot that's interesting to land, of course, somewhere that we think is going to be quite flat now. Now for this one we're going to try for this very, very large crater here. I can't remember the name of it, it might be far side, I'm not sure. Um, and that's a good place to start. Now we're going to do a little trick here so that we can actually pull our orbit up so that we're actually going to come in north of where we currently are. Now we do that again with our normal and anti-normal markers. What we'll do first of all is we're actually going to set a maneuver node which will let us predict exactly where we need to be. So we'll place a new maneuver node here and we'll burn anti-normal direction. We'll just set that up there. And at the same time we actually always want to also want to add some retrograde burn in there as well so that it's going to have us landing in that crater there. Now the blue marker is actually showing us a representation of both our anti-normal burn and our retrograde burn at the same time. So it's actually taking the difference of both of those together and showing us the exact point we need to point to to make that burn, which is extremely handy if you want to do a complex maneuver. And just firing there. Lined up perfectly. So we're just going to click and we'll warp in towards where we want to start our braking maneuver. 
Our rocket here's got enough thrust to weight ratio to sort of decelerate quite quickly, so right about here should be fine. So again we're going to switch retrograde here. We don't have a lot of fuel left in this core stage, but the fuel that we do have left is going to reduce quite a bit of that uh, remaining surface velocity that we have. Out of the 560 odd meters per second we're doing, we should be able to wipe off at least a few hundred from that just with this remaining fuel. So we're just going to make our burn here and uh, and burn this entire core stage out. Currently at 500 over 500 meters per second, and we're reducing that quickly now. Again, we're time warping so we don't have to sit through this too much, and we'll just detach this core stage. And because we've now wiped off a good percentage of our speed, we're going to coast down closer to the surface. So we're just firing our MUN descent stage. And we just want to wipe off enough speed to get us down to around that 50 meters per second mark. You don't want to wipe off too much of your velocity, otherwise you're going to be wasting fuel descending again. So you want to still be moving downwards quite quickly. Keep in mind the longer you spend above the surface, the more gravity is pulling you down, the more fuel you need to fight that gravity, so the quicker you can get down the better. So as you're approaching the surface, you just want to very slowly back your thrust off so that you're just moving downwards at a few metres per second. Sometimes it can be just a little hard to gauge how far you are above the surface. Um, using the shadow is a great thing to do if you can find the shadow because you can relate it to where you are at the surface and you can see the relative speed that you're coming down compared to your shadow. And as we approach the surface, just touch down gracefully. And... Oh... Not the most graceful landing I've ever done. We'll just start doing some science now. So we're on the east far side crater. Excellent. We'll just transmit that straight away. We want to be careful with our electric charge. We'll do an EVA report. Going to reboard. And we're going to review that and again transmit that science because we can transmit all of it. We do have to be very careful of our electric charge though, we've got no way to recharge ourselves, we haven't unlocked the solar panels yet. Storage unit here, we're going to do our typical science, Mr. Goo unit, we'll grab two of each. Just to ensure that we grab all the science, we'll grab two temperatures, and we'll just grab two of our pressure data readings here. And we'll just close our service bay. So now let's go and actually walk on the MUN on the surface. Now as soon as you let go, just press the R key to immediately turn on your jetpack so you can land a bit gracefully. Now we don't know if the moon's actually safe to touch. Is it okay? Will it kill us? We don't know. Touchdown. One small step for Kerbals. So the first thing we're going to do here is plant our very first flag. One small step for Kerbals. And we'll just add in our current location here so that we remember where we first landed. I do advise actually labelling each of your flags because that way you can tell which one is which when you're looking at which biomes you haven't yet got. We're just going to grab that EVA report quickly. Another 28 science there. And let's have a bit of a walk around, a bit of a jump. Pop out the jetpack out, have a bit of a fly around. Jetpack's actually still quite good on the MUN. It can still be a little tricky to uh, to manoeuvre around because the gravity on the MUN is still quite strong. Interestingly, the MUN's gravity is about one-sixth that of Kerbin, which is very, very similar to our own moon. So we're just heading back in now. Just overshooting that a little. Just having a bit of trouble, it's not ideal. So just do a board, excellent. And just grab the material bay observation as well, we forgot to get that before. Keep that, that's going to give us 90 science there alone, so that's a great thing. Don't transmit that obviously, if you transmit it, it's locked, you can't unlock it, so it's best to bring this back. So this is going to be a very short visit, we're going to do our last checks, and then we're going to head back off again. Three, two, one, and we'll take off.
Goodbye, man. Until next time, we're going to head 90 degrees again, just like we do on Kerbin. And we can basically turn horizontally straight away. There's no aerodynamic drag here, so we are good to go. And we'll just grab our crew report from just above the MUN and we'll transmit that. We can transmit it all. Grab our goo units. So we can grab all these science measurements again because we're now classed as being in space near the MUN. So we can actually come and grab more sets of all this data. We don't need our landing gear anymore, so we'll fold that up. We'll just grab another couple of scans here, temperature scan, keep that. Grab our pressure data. And we'll just grab duplicate scans again. We're just heading up towards our apoapsis now. We're just going to turn a course to our prograde marker so that we can actually increase our orbit as soon as we get to our marker here. And off we burn. We'll just time accelerate this again. And as soon as you've got your apoapsis marker popped to the other side, you've got a full orbit. Now the next thing we need to do is make sure that we actually burn in the right direction so that we can minimise the amount of fuel we need to get back to Kerb. And you'll see here what we're doing is we're adjusting our manoeuvre node so that we actually head out in the direction away from the MUN. Now you can rotate your manoeuvre node around the orbit by just dragging the circle in the centre there back and forth. So in this case where the MUN's moving in an anti-clockwise direction, we actually want to turn around and move uh, opposite to that back in the clockwise direction. You can see there that the purple line indicating our potential curve and orbit is changing as we move this back and forward. We want our periapsis to be as close as we can get to Kerbin's atmosphere. So we'll time accelerate around here to this manoeuvre node. And of course uh, we'll just bypass that and we'll uh, turn retrograde ready to do our burn. It's a small burn of 280 metres per second. Should only take us about 30 seconds to do this, 24 seconds to do this. And away we go. Again, we're just time accelerating so we don't have to wait for the burn to complete. And there we go there. So you can see there that our periapsis is around 75,000 metres from Kerbin's surface. And we just want to reduce that a little more. So a small burn. We're just going to slightly increase our burn just a little, bring that down to th around the 31, 32 mark. And we'll just warp all the way basically down into Kerbin now. Now we've still got a significant amount of fuel, so we can burn this quite, uh, quite effectively still to help us re-enter the atmosphere easier. So we'll just turn retrograde ready to actually do our retrograde burn. And in we come. So we'll burn here, which is going to reduce our apoapsis very, very quickly at the same time we're re-entering. Now, we are just going to eject that out sideways, a little bit close, and we can actually use our heat shield for the, uh, for the rest of our trip. There's certainly nothing wrong with using engines and tanks to slow yourself down a little before your heat shield. Temperature's looking okay. What? What the? The temperature gauge wasn't even that high. What happened? Do take a look at your flight results when you get an explosion like this, just so you can see what's going on. Science Junior Unit exploded. Ah, uh, Science Junior. We're getting a quick reload here. We'll just try this again. We're actually just going to boost up our our periapsis just a little instead of 31,000 we'll boost this up to around 40 there we go I think we might have been coming in just a little heavy considering we have still got our science junior unit there which is so sensitive to heat 
it may have also been not overly ideal that I was uh, time accelerating during the re-entry. So we're just coming in here now. And this has made a, a fairly significant difference. So if you've got the fuel to burn, you can certainly use that. We'll fire that off again. Fire that bottom stage off and we'll just complete our re-entry this time. In we come. And that's better. Down through the atmosphere, we'll just pump, drop our parachutes. Again, we'll decouple our heat shield as well. And jettison. And down we come. So we should be returning with a fairly significant amount of science here. We've actually picked up, uh, you know, multiple sets. So this should be the biggest haul back we've had so far. Splash down. Again, just see if there's any uh, any things to recover, and then uh, and then recover your vessel. So we've gained 349.3 science, and that is actually excluding the science we transmitted back. So we've actually accumulated a very large amount. We've now got 486.5 science, which is going to be great for our next mission. We also recovered a bunch of cash and a few more experience points for Jeb. So we've done the plant flag on the moon contract, science data from the surface of the moon, and we've got a heap of milestones as well. We've entered the orbit of the moon, we've got, done a suborbital flight above the moon, we've landed on the surface, we've walked on the surface, we've planted a flag, performed a spacewalk in orbit and returned home. Wow, we did an orbit of the moon contract as well. all in the one mission. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you have any questions for me, please do whack them in the comments below. Thanks very much to all of you that have subscribed, and for those that haven't, please do subscribe to see more. Follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game, and we'll see you in the next video. I grab the pressure data again just to be safe, make sure we got it all. Excellent. We better close that up before it burns off. Okay, excellent. Oh, 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 o